India is such an incredibly diverse country, it should come as no surprise that it's been influenced by literally almost every one of the surrounding regions, from the Orient to the Near East. It's easy to see the massive impact that these ancient peoples have had on this juggernaut of civilizations, but who were the original peoples of this region? A very contentious subject that has been debated over for hundreds of years now. The term Adivasi, or tribal, is used to describe those inhabitants of the subcontinent who have been recognized by the Indian, Nepali, Bangladeshi, or Pakistani government as being indigenous to the region, but this does not describe a single unified group by any linguistic, religious, or cultural perspective, not in the same way that others use the term indigenous. And although their history is still shrouded in mystery, further research and analysis is definitely painting an increasing vivid and reliable picture on the ancient history and genetics of the world's most densely populated region. For all intents and purposes, although little to nothing is known about this previous indigenous population of South Asia from prehistory, historians and anthropologists have find the two groups that make up the bulk of the South Asian gene pool as Ancestral North Indians, or ANI, and Ancestral South Indians, or ASI. As you can imagine, the ANI population originated from the northwest and was a gradual migration of people over thousands of years, with one of the most significant migration waves of course being that of the Indo-Europeans out of Central Asia, a group more reminiscent of ancient European populations than to the currently highly admixed Turkic groups we see today. Now, even in my first video I made over the differences between North and South Indian genetics, I thought I made this clear, but some people still seem to be a bit confused. Because of thousands of years of intermixing, virtually the entirety of the South Asian population has varying degrees of ANI and ASI ancestry, but generally speaking, the Dravidians of the South have more native DNA, while Indo-Aryans generally have more of this ANI ancestry. Linguists are still divided on the origin of the Dravidian language family, whether it be autochthonous to the region of southern India or originated in western Asia, but it is clear that the Dravidian languages were far more widespread before the migration of the Indo-Iranians from the north, with one of the relic populations being the Brahui people, a Dravidian group of a couple million scattered throughout Pakistan and parts of Afghanistan, who are by far the most isolated and northwestern Dravidian population, although through intermixing, they now have more in common genetically with the neighboring Pashtuns and Belush than the Tamil or other South Indians. The exchange between the Dravidians of the South and the new Indo-Aryan migrants to the North was not strictly genetic, as the two language families have a tremendous impact on each other, so much so that much of the lexicon between the two are uniquely South Asian, not shared with any other language family. There are many factors at play when it comes to the genetic distribution among various ethnic, linguistic, religious, and social groups in the Indian subcontinent, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend you watch my video I made on haplogroups and their relation to human genetics, as I feel it would greatly aid in the explanation of the concepts presented in this video if you don't have a good grasp of the topic already. I've compiled a plethora of sources relating to genetics and haplogroup identification for groups in the Indian subcontinent which are perhaps the most crucial evidence for the origin of the various South Asian ethno-linguistic macrogroups, and although this is not 100% foolproof, haplogroups in the region can be divided between their geographic origin, with haplogroups such as C, N, and O having an East Asian origin, haplogroups G, J, and R being of Middle Eastern, Central Asian, or European origin, and H, K, and L being native to the region of South Asia, presumably being traced back to the indigenous Australo inhabitants before the migrations from the northeast and northwest. Because of the variety of sources used in compiling the haplogroup makeup, the figures don't align exactly with other estimates. However, just by looking at this chart, you get the overall idea. That being Western Eurasian admixture tends to increase in upper caste individuals and decrease among the lower castes. Those in the lower caste definitely have the largest proportion of ASI ancestry, with nearly two-thirds of the paternal haplogroups among them being indigenous to South Asia, while between the upper and middle caste, the difference isn't huge, but it is noticeable. This is remarkably similar to how the Americas saw a fusion of many different races and cultures post-15th century, following the introduction of Iberian and, to a lesser extent, African culture, which transformed the lower two-thirds of the American continents into Latin America. 
Essentially, in this analogy, the Iberians are comparable to the ancient Indo-Aryans, while the natives are comparable to the indigenous South Indians, all the mestizos of America being the end result of hundreds of years of intermixing, with miscegenation being exacerbated in this case due to the vast technological advancements that allowed for a more fluid degree of movement. As many know, the caste system of historical Latin America was of course named after the caste system of India, only substituting social class with race and ethnicity, although even in Latin America, the majority of individuals that self-identify as white, black, or even native have at least some minor or major admixture from another racial group. As one would most likely guess, in most Latino countries, those that identify as Criollo, Blanco, or Castizo are generally still in the top income bracket for their respective countries, while those of full-blooded Amerindian descent are generally somewhere near the bottom. But interestingly, when it comes to the mixed-race middle class, it's generally a spectrum, wherein those with more European DNA are more likely to be closer to the upper class, while those with more native DNA are more likely to slide towards the bottom of the scale. And seeing how the same rings true for India, this is one of the reasons why lighter skin in South Asia is usually associated with the nobility or upper class, which can be especially apparent among Bollywood actors who are anything but representative of the South Asian populace as a whole. Although there are, of course, many major differences regarding the two regions of Latin America and South Asia from a linguistic and religious point of view, I suspect that given the same amount of time and similar circumstances, Latin America could have evolved into something very similar to the subcontinent indeed. When comparing haplogroup identification between ethno-linguistic groups in South Asia, a very fascinating picture emerges as it becomes widely apparent that Indo-Aryans have a far higher degree of Western Eurasian haplogroups and by extension genetic input when compared to that of Dravidians, although the distribution isn't entirely lopsided, with both groups having a decent amount of input from both ANI and ASI groups, as mentioned previously. Among other smaller groups in India, such as the Tibeto-Burman inhabitants of the Northeast, as well as the Mandari and other Austroasiatic peoples, clearly Eastern Eurasian haplogroups are dominant, with a large degree of intermixing for the Mandari peoples. What becomes truly captivating is mapping out the genetics of the Adivasi or tribal groups of central and southern India, many of whom have remained generally untouched in the past couple thousand years. Nearly three-fourths of the haplogroups of Adivasis from South and Central India are of ASI origin, a stark contrast even when compared to the average Dravidian group. And among some tribes, such as the Koya or Karaga of Southern India, their ancestry is almost entirely ASI, which should be extremely clear by their appearance alone, being more reminiscent of Pacific Islanders than other more Caucasian-looking Indians from further north, which has resulted in some classifying them as Negritos, placing them in the same category as those native to the bulk of Southeast Asian countries. The Andamanese people are another example of what unmixed indigenous South Asians may have looked like. As I've discussed in an older video, the Andamanese being isolated on the Andaman and Nicobar island chain were completely unmixed by the waves of migration from the north, even up until their incorporation into India under the Chola Empire. This is presumably the first outside contact the Andamanese people have had in over 20,000 years, and even then, many groups still remained in complete isolation until the Danish and later British took over the islands in the 18th century, although following the introduction of diseases from the mainland brought by European and Indian migrants, a predictable cycle of disease and decay took place among these peoples, and coupled with intermarriage with these new migrants caused an unbelievably sharp population decline in only a century. Today, less than a thousand people of full-blooded or even partial Andamanese descent exist, including a few hundred on the infamous North Sentinel Island, who remained possibly the most isolated group of humans on the planet. The Andamanese, however, due to their extreme isolation and endogamous nature, are an example of genetic drift, having a very distinct look when compared to other Negrito populations of Southeast Asia, or the Adivasi tribals of South Central India, although it's possible that this is what the first migrants out of Africa who traveled along the southern coast of Asia may have looked like, and the Andamanese are a remnant of this once widespread group. 
Another example of how indigenous South Asians may have appeared before the introduction of Indo-Aryans or even the Dravidians are the Veda tribe of Sri Lanka, a remnant of an archaic population that once inhabited Sri Lanka and possibly much of southern India, as can be seen by their unique appearance and genetics. Although the Veda language has been heavily influenced by Sinhalese, the national language of Sri Lanka, much of its vocabulary is neither Indo-Aryan or Dravidian in origin making it the only linguistic remnant of this previous ASI population. I've seen academic studies claim that this original source population of the ASI as hailing from Africa, but this is misleading as they were about as genetically distant from modern sub-Saharan Africans as any other Eurasian group, but indeed their features would have been quite similar to that of modern Africans, or more accurately most similar to that of the neighboring Oceanian races consisting of Papans, Melanesians, and Aborigines, and technically speaking they would have originated out of Africa some tens of thousands of years before but hey, who didn't? The fact that South and Southeast Asia were comprised of a completely different racial group a few thousand years ago when compared to now will never fail to fascinate me, as it truly is incredible how the Eastern and Western Eurasian peoples migrated South to intermix with the existing population to give us the new cultures and phenotypes we see today. Please let me know your thoughts on the Adivasis and genetic history of the Indian subcontinent, and for today's poll, let me know which population you think the Adivasis or other ASI groups are most closely connected to. As always, this has been Mason. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.